Yo, 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 what up everybody? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Another episode, just to let you out know, boy King Vic is out of commission. It's just gonna be your boy Chef. He's gonna be, I'm gonna be interviewing uh, today. We have a guest, Miker. What's up? What's how up? y'all doing? Pretty uh, good. How are you? Chilling, chilling. Yo, thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, so, Miker has been. Uh, I've known Miker personally uh, since 2008. Uh, when I walked into Sun City, I've been. I was recommended, and they said. Uh, I said, "Hey, uh, does anybody know anybody that does graffiti tattoos?" And they said, "Oh, Miker." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was it. That was the beginnings of it. Yeah, because I had beginnings a, of our rela- yes. relationship. I mean, basically, 2008 was when I got my first tattoo. The reason I got it was because I was like getting married, and then I ha- having a kid, and I was like, "Dude, I gotta get a tattoo for my you know freedom is over or <laughs> whatever yeah. it was." I don't know what it was. I was just like, "I'm gonna get a tattoo." That's my last decision as a man, oh, single yeah. man. <laughs> <clears throat> So yeah, I got a tattoo. Uh, it was my first tattoo. Was that the uh, CB4? Yeah, yeah, yeah. CB4. Um, and I was like, yeah, I seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, everybody says that, yo, and I, I feel a little thuggish when I say, when I don't. I'll be like, I know. Yeah. Exactly. I know. Chris Rock. Gusto. Rob- I know. I got <laughs> Gusto. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But no, actually, Clayton Bear the Fourth is more uh, technical, more white. Clayton Bear the Fourth. But the fourth, uh, the yeah. fourth of. Uh, the fourth generation fourth generation your, yeah, yeah exactly of specifically clayberry specifically yeah, yeah exactly clayberry and then really my cool. then my son and then later down the line you did cb5 yeah 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 <laughs> so there was a lot of <laughs> tattooing going on from uh 08 to uh even up to, to now. now yeah recently uh, i had one done on my chest so uh, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's pretty dope to know you as an artist more uh, than, uh, you know, as a friend or anything like that. It's because uh, in, in town, uh, there's some, you know, enigmas. There's some people that are doing some big things. But I feel like, you know, you're, you as an artist are really talented. You know, I mean, and, you. and you're using your talent that. and your passion for the, the the tattooing or maybe just the art of tattooing, the whole uh, culture of it. And you're promoting it within your your own shop. You got uh, things that you go uh, on tour for. You go to like Detroit, I remember. Uh, other yes. cities, Austin. Yeah. To, um, any Albuquerque other cities you want to? Albuquerque, Albuquerque yeah. for sure, for sure. Any other cities do you remember that you liked, or that you remember they've gone to? Um, I mean, as a, as a shop, that's one thing that uh, our sh- uh, shop owner, the original owner, Joe Acevedo, um, you know, which I would like to thank for mm-hmm. getting my start in my career. You know, he's the one that gave me a shot. Um, as well as my mentor Chris Dirtz, right. but uh, you know, right right when I got to the shop, that was definitely a thing that was instilled in us is like getting around, going to these conventions, seeing other artists that are doing the conventions as well, right. and just getting inspired. You know, knowing that there's a whole world out there that people are getting tattoos, different styles of tattoos, mm-hmm. uh, different levels of skill, for and, sure. And you know, just getting out there and uh, being able to meet, rub elbows with these people, mm-hmm. you know, is just instilled in us. You know, so we just try to keep that on a regular basis and push that for our artists that we have working with us. Yeah. But it's not easy to actually like promote what you do. You know what I mean? It's easier to stay in, in one lane and kind of just, you know, I'm a tattoo artist. But I guess Joe Acevedo is one that gave you the opportunity to say, would you like to go out of town and maybe tattoo under the Sun City umbrella or something like that? Yes, definitely. Oh, okay. yeah. I, I, yeah. I first went out of town as an apprentice, so I was there to help. Nice. And then uh, eventually, you know, I, <clears throat> once I right. showed enough skill, you know. But then I, was, I think that's how you just, I mean, if you're a tattoo artist, that's how you get out there and kind of put, give it, put a name for yourself and give like more skills, see what's out there as other artists, right? You get to see what other artists are doing and yeah, yeah, different exactly. styles. <clears throat> but uh, just to go back, you talk about uh, Chris Dirtz and Joe Acevedo. So what was the beginning of it? Like, I know you from 2008. What was the beginnings of your tattoo career? How did, how did you get into tattooing? So you got me at pretty much a year i was a oh year you were a year in yeah, oh, yeah. Wow, i okay. started uh the summer of 2007 apprenticing okay um before that um you know i've always been into art um since very young but before that i i did a lot of graffiti art okay. so my mentor chris dirtz he's actually someone i knew from you know when we both started doing graffiti for sure and um, he's a, he's and actually the guest on your last podcast too, yes right? yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Whip Whip Shaded and Faded. Faded. yes yeah, for sure, yeah, man. Yeah. it's a good podcast if y'all want to check it out like Thank any you. tattoo artist or anybody who just wants to listen to some of these guys talk that's very funny and very intellectual and as far as the tattooing world you get to know a little bit of something something yeah you, you know we try to have a little bit of something for everyone we talk you know things that uh 
would appeal to t- other tattoo artists, but we also have a few episodes of like, uh, you know, what clients can expect when coming in for a tattoo. But so. I think as a, a, a just what, real quick, uh, Sorry. being a fly, <laughs> no, 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 to, to deviate real quick, <laughs> but being a, like, you know what I mean? When I wa- when I listened to it, I kind of felt like the first couple of, or even the first couple of I listened to, I was like, ah, I guess it's kind of geared toward tattoo artists, but they, there's more, there's more than that. There's other things that like, even the stories you tell about like yeah. going out of town or the stories even in your shop, they're funny and you know what I mean? And then you guys, the, 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 the chemistry you guys have between oh, yeah. you guys and then your guest Chris I guess you've known him so long yeah, like, yeah, you guys yeah. had a we've, great we've chemistry known, between all three of you guys yeah so pretty much you know I, I've known uh, Chris Dirt since uh, 1996 I want to say but uh, you know years later I was working uh, a job as you know installing mini blinds and, and drapes and stuff okay but uh, you know I always had the artwork within me and, and I just could never find a way to implement it as an income you know was was so, tattooing on the like on the horizon was it no, like no hmm, it, it was never never anything i really thought about like strongly you know mm-hmm. i liked them i liked getting them but uh you know i wasn't never you Inclined know inspired to, to be that okay, yeah okay. of course anyone that draws it, a lot of people tell them like you should do tattoos yeah that's you know? like the influence you yeah, go down but, the uh, path you go down um pretty much you know i was i was just working and and I had seen him around at like hip hop nights and stuff, you know. So he had told me to start tattooing, and if he ever won, if I ever wanted anything, you know, to hit him up, or nice. if I ever was interested in, you know, getting into it. Yeah. So That's trying dope. school, trying a uh, college out for a semester and a half, I was failing the the second semester, about to lose financial aid. So I've been there. I, was dude, like, I understand. I that. either <clears throat> you know um, push forward. Or yeah, yeah, push push forward and figure out a way to make money off this art mm-hmm. or just, you know, go back to being an employee, you know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, and you were at that crossword. You knew school yeah. wasn't the way and you were making a, yeah, a, a I was going day. to school part time. So you had and, the crossword. And, and working, make, yeah. Mm, nice. So it, it was either like, all right, I'm not going to, school's definitely not going to work out. Mm-hmm. Am I going to stay at this job and mm-hmm. go back to full time? Right. Or I could see what's up with tattooing. <laughs> you know, my friend told me and, yeah. So I went in that option, and you know, thankfully I did because it now it's, it became. But you put everything into it at that point. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Felt, I, I got a lot of passion for it. You That's know, what's up. With that, I didn't know I had for it until I got into the world and immersed myself in that. What 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 was the transition from actually like uh, drawing, uh, spraying to actually like putting it on skin? What was the transition? And how did you? Um. So yeah, when I went in there, you know, I, I would do a lot of murals and uh and graffiti walls, graffiti murals, but mm. also you know I do signs and and paint signs for businesses, murals for businesses. Oh. Uh, you even done my logo. You even did my yeah, logo yeah, yeah. for my business, keeping it PC. If you guys see that, he's did, he's the one who did that logo for sure. Yeah. So you know, I've always been into like lettering and design. Right. Um, so. You know, when I came into tattooing, they kind of pushed me that way. Like, oh, you should do lettering because, mm-hmm. you know, you do graffiti. And that's why I got passed over to you yeah, because exactly, you're looking yeah. for specifically Specific, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, you know, it kind of went from there. And I guess it took realizing how I I thought I knew how to draw, but I knew how to recreate. You know, I had to really see something and then... And then and draw it the draw, way you draw see it exact yeah mm-hmm. but uh, yeah like for instance this one the Kanye West one I don't know if you guys can see that but basically like the skull to the hat to the actual headband it's like a lot of detail and like he saw it like he's looking at the picture and then going back and back and even the detail in the actual colors to make it the whole actual portrait like he sees the vision he sees the the art and the transition from paper to skin too it's really really that's where the talent comes in for sure even like the 3d this has been like what two years almost i don't know yeah yeah Yeah. so got some three three (laughs) three-dimensional look to it and stuff like that (laughs) but um so yeah so i i mean so the tattoo you're you're, you started transitioning and like when did you become like not inspired but like you were like okay i can make a living out of this and then you were like let me get better like how do i get better i think it was once i like realized okay like i can't just look at something all the time and and then try to recreate it i, I had to go back to the basics you know and, oh, really? and, and and see the history of it you know i've always been in history myself you know uh-huh. so going back and seeing traditional tattoos kind of inspired me to like learn how to play the sheet music that's the way i see it you know if what i, I mean? can, like i'm an outsider so i remember like i can hear people like oh 
just practice your pedals practice your rose pedals yeah, right? is yeah that one of the exactly. basics yeah, is that one yeah, of the basics yeah. yeah you gotta learn the formulas uh -huh. and how to draw things simple mm -hmm. that way you could draw more detailed you know dope man i i would never i don't know i don't say i don't say never never but like it's like a recipe it's okay. it's, it's, it's kind of okay. like like some <laughs> sometimes you have to like get recipes follow them directly right mm -hmm. and you know how the dish is going to come out and it's rated a certain thing because somebody wrote this recipe right so traditional tattooing is like kind of going back to those simple designs that are strong that are like timeless looking mm -hmm. um, that have been done over and over they're like a nice classic recipe that you can do you learn that you learn which flavors and ingredients go into it mm -hmm. so then you're able to start cooking on your own and creating dishes that have these this Derib touch of this inspiration but you're able to throw your own spice very your own good flavor, your own very uh, good analogy fusions, yeah you know? for sure absolutely i get that so you build off those techniques like yes. that you learn from that one like a koi fish i'm sure that's yeah like, yeah, yeah definitely so that, yeah. that would be a good example you know it's uh you know something that has been done for ages you know in the japanese but tattooing but you know mm -hmm. us adding color you wanting that touch of color mm -hmm. and you know we we gave it that new look that contemporary look right right but then i've seen you, you i'm sure you do like hundreds so you have to figure out a way to make it just different different certain different yes, little, yeah little, yeah definitely little yeah. things that are and, different and, and, and the more the more you cook the same dish like you, the more oh, consistency man. you have i can you tell know? you for sure like the way i cook is just like maybe i'll make the same dish over like the same way but yeah. I usually add something different or cook it yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah, longer yeah, or yeah, exactly. brown it or, you last know. Time, last time yeah. I thought it tasted this way, so I'm going to try this. Yeah, this good yeah, analogy, exactly. bro. Yeah, I like yeah. that a lot because I, I could definitely understand it now. Yeah. I don't know if I would go down that. What I was going to say is I don't know if I would go down that route ever, but I mean, why not? I, who knows later in life if I'm like, because I've been interested. Hey, Duncan you know? Hines, man. <laughs> Duncan Hines. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know what that means, Shit, but I'm hungry for I don't know if you've ever heard of Chef Boyardee. Exactly, dude. Hey, diversification. Yeah. Shit, I'm going into meal preps but you know in inking i could go into inking you know what i'm saying uh, first of all actually you know the reason i got that graffiti tattoo is because when i was growing up as a kid uh, i had a friend of mine that would always draw graffiti and his you know like we'd have art books and it'd be like hey you have to do 15 per week 15 and he'd do 15 different you know oh, wow. graffiti yeah. you know and she was like giving him grades for it so i was like oh, okay that looks dope i want to do that so i did started doing 15 of those and it didn't matter if i colored it in or not as long as i did like the sketch of it or even tried i would turn the page and just keep don't keep going yeah so that's how I got interested in graffiti art, man, and just layering it. I I draw my actual like you know tag. I, I swear I was like right on the verge of being a, a graffiti artist, you know, yeah. going out there and making a mural. I just didn't have that. Like I didn't really say, hey, let's hang out. Let's. What do you do on the nights? Or yeah, what do you? Yeah. You know, I I just did, wasn't that interested. I like the art of it. I like the actual aesthetic of it. And when I saw it, I used to tell people, this, it's not like that. They're, like people are always get the misconception of what graffiti art is. What is if you could define uh, graphics? What would what would you? Uh... Well, graffiti. <clears throat> you know, when I got into it, it's just mm -hmm. you know like stealing and tagging on shit. So really, you know, it's, it's a, a culture. It's, it's a, a culture. A, a, it was being a little bit of a juvenile delinquent for Bad. sure. But then uh, you know, like uh, you eventually see that there's more to it as mm -hmm. the more you go into it. You know, you want to you want to be known, so you you start tagging. You know, you start writing your name or whatever name you choose sure, yeah. and you show your style it's like are you claiming the wall yeah. or are you claiming the neighborhood um it just depends on where you grow up i guess you oh, know? okay like, okay, uh, okay but but tagging graffiti it's more like you're sh you're doing your name you're not claiming anything you're, no. you're doing your name with style like i was here and this is how I write my name. So if know? somebody writes over you, is that like disrespect? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Oh, but is it like I'm gonna beat your ass or I'm gonna write a better mural? Well, there's there's rules like there, okay, you know, you have a tag, and then mm. if someone goes over it with like a uh, bubble letters, you know, that oh. most people know them throw ups, or okay. uh, you know, they they're usually colored in. Okay. So and then after, what would go over that is something that's done a little bit nicer. As long okay. as they're going over it nicer, that's. The rule, like from the old, like if they needed graffiti your space. documentaries, like you know? they needed These the space. So oh, sorry, I had yeah. to go over here. I actually seen the documentary when they did say that. Like, yeah, they just like you know end up covering it up because it's part of my mural or whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Dope shit. And then uh, like train watching, I guess is that what they call it when when like uh, benching. benching, benching. That's right. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, but I remember him posted up like he had a certain uh, spot that he would sit on that uh, hill, and then the trains would come by or stop, and yeah, then he'd be and able to take see photos. And but uh, what was catalog. cool about that is, is is not what it's not his city. It's like it's not stuff that you've seen in your city. It's like 
stuff sort of passed by from Canada. Yeah. You know, he was living in New York, I think. So it was like Canada and you know, oh, Vermont yeah, yeah. and Virginia. And he'd be able to see other, you know, graphic artists and stuff like that. So Yeah, for sure. I, I thought that, that was cool. That whole documentary. I think it's on Netflix or HBO or one of those. I forget yeah, what it is. Yeah, there's a few different yeah, ones. Yeah, there's a few there different sure. ones. But yeah, the one I, I saw recently, I think, I think it's on it, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, I think it was like uh, with... Yeah, more like freight trains, right? Yeah, and yeah. it was more of the the story of the artist, like how he, how what it's like to be an artist, not like oh, okay. the, not so negative or anything like that. It was like watching him like go. He watched the, watch the train, and then he'd fucking be inspired, and he'd go do a mural, and then he'd have like his spotter and stuff like that, and like it was really like interesting to know the culture, you know what I mean, and like how much he loved it, and not like he was oh I'm gonna be a, a criminal and do yeah, this, you yeah, know what I yeah, mean? It was like sure. the love of the art. But there is a little bit of that too. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess so. It's gotta Trust be me, because I got, yeah, I got some paperwork to show for. Like, I can otherwise. imagine. Nah, I mean, nah. that's the thing though. So like, let's say like right now, like like let me do a book list, and uh, I have a friend that actually does it. And uh, shout out, uh, I don't, even, I don't, I don't even, uh, bumps. I guess he goes by, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know yeah, him, yeah, yeah. yeah he's cool okay, guy. cool. From so, LA, right? Yeah, yeah from yeah, LA, yeah. exactly. Uh, basically, he do, he does this thing, and I've never actually. I could be like, hey, next time you go out, or show me how to do a mural, or like, you know what I mean? Like, if I get a fucking this, can you show me? I could go down that route. That's the thing. It's an, it's just right there. Yeah. He loves the art. I could I, he could show me and tell me, it, and it would be partly like really something really cool. But I just you know. I don't, I don't know. I feel like the thrill, like you said, there's a little bit of an edge to it. Yeah, like he yeah, takes me sure. out, you know, it's not just some bullshit like, hey, you're going to fucking, you know, yeah, play yeah. jump rope and shit, you for know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's cool, man. So, like, uh, I love, I had a respect for the art, and that's why I got the gra uh, graffiti tattoo. Um, you moved on from graffiti to, uh, like, what? Like, like what, would, what would be your next, like, say that you, like, was it the Japanese type of culture art or... No, just just tattooing in general. Tattooing yeah, in general. Yeah. It was like whatever came your way, or did you kind of? Yeah, to... you know the the shop I started at it was like a pretty busy street shop. So you know, it was just kind of when I first started, it was just a lot of the we had a bunch of books of designs up front, tons of books. I still have them, but <laughs> uh, you know the clients would come in, they would flip through these books, pick like uh, Chinese lettering symbols and. And uh, different like uh, names and styles, angels, all types of everything was there, you know. For sure. So you know, we would usually ha uh, either some artists would redo it exactly, and others that wanted to learn more, take it to another level, would you know tweak what was there, and oh yeah, I'm just gonna redraw it, and we would redraw it. You know? I th I think it's like like that's pretty simple, but I think a later later you kind of refined it a little bit more, like not just like drawing like i see you taking pictures too like when you like roses when you do roses like you have like every every rose you do basically is different right yeah yeah pretty much you have like yeah. pictures right and then yeah i think the one we did on yours was, yeah, uh, was photo, like a photo front, that i took right it was it was like front facing and you found one and then you're yeah, like yeah yeah this. in in my photo gallery it was actually uh i go to the el paso rose garden i try to go like every year I, yeah and i just take a grip of photos and, right. and i'll try to use them when i have to do a realistic uh rose, may, but know? that's that's deep i mean that's like research a different way to research if you're a tattoo artist you know like take pictures of what your your medium is or yeah you what, get you get the your, exact angle that you're looking for you know so it's it's a real helpful your subject you know? is yeah yeah, yeah. Just really cool of, yeah I'm, different uh ways like for me like when i research uh, a recipe i'll look into like uh different re chefs and the way they cr cr uh, create it and different oh, styles yeah, yeah, yeah. and then i'll make my style like okay i see that and maybe like alton brown do you do you i know you like cook like right or no alton you just like brown, food yeah. in, gen in general yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. yeah, like you talk about like all, all the food that you like a, a lot when, or maybe because i ask you yeah, yeah yeah i'll be like what restaurant are you going to and then you're like oh, okay, oh let me yeah, tell yeah. you because it's specific yeah like grub when you, you told me about uh, uh, right, grub, right? Or one, one grub community. One grub community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, that, that's a good spot, man. Like, he, you're the one who told me about that spot. And when I went, pff, nothing but good stuff for sure. But yeah, for basically, sure. what I'm trying and to they say. Grow their own, they have their own farm where they grow their own produce. Yeah, amazing, they were doing yeah. a fundraiser recently. I hope they like got everything going, right? Did you know? Uh, no, I'm not no? Too sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the chef was looking for uh, a little bit of uh, like a startup again, like, because things were going, like, you know, they're like a community of like donations. Yeah. And they yeah. use the donations. I think they were kind of in you know, like a downturn of donations. So. Uh, but then they got a big because uh, he was on a show. Oh, right? cool! So he was on like a sh Netflix show, so they give him a kick, some money. Oh, nice! I hope yeah, everything's yeah, working yeah. out over there. That's oh, dope. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, but uh, like I said, uh, I use like Alton Brown and like Gordon Ramsay, and then I'll just randomly look see one on Google, see how it like kind of, kind of comes out, and then like do my way, like yeah. kind of do it on my. And so I have like a little flair, but um, that's my research. I don't know. Yeah, Other definitely. Than that, I guess you know, like say like uh, for instance, uh, doing a Japanese tattoo the other day. Mm. You know, I, I pulled out a book that had uh, you know it's just about Japanese tattooers, you know, so I'll look at that first, mm -hmm. get inspired, and then I go even further back and get, like, uh, the images that were drawn in the 1800s and oh, made shit. as, like, uh, water, uh, woodblock prints. Right, right. So these are, like, there wasn't the tattooing that there was, but they still have, like, this style that is used in that kind of Japanese tattooing. Damn. So it's kind of like going to the original, original yeah, recipe, no you know shit, what I mean? Dude. But Hell I yeah. have like, and then the I'll have a, few, a few contemporary things, mm -hmm. you know, like on my phone usually, but I'll have all these things in front of me and just kind of like see what vibe I'm going for, what flavor I'm going for, and then <laughs> try to, you know, go to that, you know, because sometimes it, it changes with the client, you know, it's not just what I want to do. Like someone might ask for a dragon that looks a little bit more like anime fantasy style. So right. I'll try to find a nice happy middle to where I feel like I still abided by some rules, mm -hmm. but there's that little, you know, the little flavor of the tradition, you know? Nice. I, I remember when I came in for the woo, uh, you, I, I said I wanted a, like a 3d with the three dimensional and then bees. So then that's what you came up with, but you drew it. Right? Or you like yeah, combine yeah, yeah. two pictures yes, together yeah, in a way. Exactly. Finding yeah. the best photo and then uh and then cutting, pasting, you know. Yeah. Drawing on some of the bees. Yeah. I exactly. I, yeah, I feel like a lot of the little bees we, we drew on. Yeah. Uh, it yeah, was like yeah, drawn yeah. and then mm -hmm. and then yeah, these were like the uh, bigger ones were like stenciled on. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, I think, and then uh, from what I heard, uh, we had a one tattoo artist, Matt from uh, Blue Panda. He oh, yeah. said he's, you know, uh, he's really talented. But he yeah, was really he was saying um, it's kind of like a um, like one of those thrills when uh, somebody comes in the shop and says, "Hey, uh, go ahead, whatever you want. Can you tattoo whatever you want? Is that one of those things that you like or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it, it depends on. For me, it depends on um, what I what area i have to work in like some oh. areas are very inspiring if it's a smaller area like do you mind ask me, asking what, what part do you uh i don't know like i think anything that rolls on the body like that has a lot of flow me personally i like uh you know like the japanese style so oh. like stuff oh, okay. like that where you could like go move. crazy with the background mm -hmm. move it around where it needs to go the tribal tattooing you know mm. stuff like that it's like <clears> a <throat> But you still have to kind of give them something that they want. Like for mm -hmm. me personally, like, so I'll usually pick their brain a little bit. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. Not and then just, just like... kind of get a hint of their personality and mm -hmm. then like, all right, cool. You know? But uh, for Matt, I could totally see it because like he does a lot of he... realism. So there's probably all these things like, that he has photo built up. images that like are super exciting. Uh, like, oh, you know what? I haven't done one of those yet. So, you know? So. Yes, and I know what I want. For, Anything I want, I know exactly. Hours, sure. You're, you're going to get this. You know, and <laughs> I don't know. I get, from a new movie or whatnot. You know, I'd like imagine, a, yeah. I think you'd have to save up a grip, though. Who knows? I, I, I haven't gone down that route. Like, uh, see... Uh, people are like oh next time I get a tattoo I'll go to Vegas or like when I was in Austin I was passing by 6th street there's that w uh, one tattoo place it's like white with the door and you upstairs and I had opened the door and I was about to go upstairs I was like I'm probably gonna spend like a thousand dollars right now I'm like I don't know about that and I'm like it hurts and I fucking yeah, turn back there's places that are you know fill yeah. every need pretty much you yeah, know, different know. styles of tattooing so yeah. but not that saying the quality is lower or anything like that and, yeah but. well I mean like uh for different reasons some people just want something real quick some mm. people want an amazing piece that takes hours to do you know yeah so, i don't think i would get anything less than three hours or two hours yeah you know me mean? personally like in, I, yeah, yeah. I, I like to do something like in three hour increments yeah, 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 <laughs> three four hours yeah i think it's like my attention just like my focus isn't there you know yeah so, i think the longest one i think maybe done five hours because it was at the fest the the tattoo convention that, that this one that was that one yeah, yeah I, I think, think the background like, yeah and when it's a background like that uh -huh. i enjoy it you know what i mean because yeah, i'm like just, yeah it's like swooshing water around is that what that know? whip shaded yeah. it means whip shaded is uh, that or no, no that's just more colored color? <laughs> i don't know I, I, I was whip shaded to... would be kind of like the, your lion right there oh you know? okay it's like I, the speckled you know it has then, like a real rough like thrown out look. okay and then faded it yeah. I, was, I was just like fade like the, I guess like the it, shading like, right? it'd be like sauteed ah yeah. watch out you guys <laughs> analogies for days watch out guys hey, hey watch out with this guy <laughs> dope man that's fucking re retarded so I mean I ran out of room on this arm I'm trying to think yeah we got one on the chest now so I don't know man it's like addicting for me like it's like 
I want a tattoo or like I'll get a tattoo and then I'm like, oh man, why the fuck did I get a tattoo? Like, and then I go, oh man, I want a tattoo. It's like a, a hill. It's like a fucking, I'm almost ready for another tattoo, especially like seeing you and talking to you. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I can't wait for another tattoo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like well, it's one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, I kind of wanted to uh, uh, also talk to you about like uh, growing up in El Paso because basically like I'm from El Paso, but I left. I was uh Born in, born in 82, and I grew up in, like, central area, like, by Sula Vista Mall. I guess I call it central, but it's, like, by yeah. Sula Vista Mall. And I uh, lived with my grandmother, and I basically, like, roamed those streets, man, when I was a What's, kid. What street were you on? On Elmhurst. 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 And it was, like, be, like Sula Vista and then Elmhurst. There's also, like, Honeysuckle and... Um, I don't even know, like uh, Devonshire. A, I don't know. There's a couple yeah, yeah, yeah. streets, but Monta- it would be Montana and then Sula Vista, and then you'd have like Ponder Park, and then the Sula Vista Mall is right there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, but anyway, that area, I used to roam, and I was on my bike, and I would, you know, the craziest thing I would do was like go like 10 streets down and be like, oh, shit, you know. That yeah. was crazy to me, you know what I mean? And then I fucking left to Florida. My dad got a job in uh, construction. We left to Florida. I lived there for 10 years. Um, and then when I got back to El Paso, I left right away. My parents were in some turmoil, man. It was bad. Bad, bad. Yeah. So I fucking left to, uh, to college, 18, went to um, Scottsdale. I lived in my uncle, f- I guess, two years, three years while I was in, you know, uh, college. And then stayed in Arizona a little bit, but then came back to El Paso and fell in love. Yeah. Once I, you know, I, I actually met my wife, or ex-wife, sorry, <laughs> at this point. Uh, we had kids, and then I just... Once I started my business and the, and, and the reception I got from uh, from people in El Paso, I was like, nah, I'm not leaving. So I embrace it. I love El Paso. I love people, the people and everything. But um, I, I wish I would have grown up from the beginning. I, I think it would have been a different life, honestly, because uh, I had the friends I had and things like that. I actually struggled uh, socially when I moved. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't just paradise. People were like, oh, why did you come back to El Paso? It's like, well, I mean, first of all, it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? Living over there, that goes fucking culture uh, shock and all this yeah. shit. You know what I mean? So uh, I just love, that's why the reason I love El Paso, it's like media, it's like this, like, that's like frequency that's like not so high and then like not so low either. You know what I mean? Like yeah. with like poverty or anything like that. Like I feel like we're at a good level. The economy's good and like it's just chill here. You know what I'm saying? Like I tell people, come visit me. You know, I'll go visit you, but come visit me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, for sure. Fuck, you don't understand. You know, West Texas is pretty dope. So I don't know what kind of perspective. Uh, I just you know, growing up, what what uh, what area did you grow up in? Well, I grew up mm-hmm. down the street from you. No, oh, Ben, no, 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 stop no, playing. No, no, I grew up. Uh, pretty much by like eastwood high school okay so it's kind of down the street the next mm. next high school area over from you but was always roaming around cielo vista mall that, that area oh, okay um <clears throat> had you rode your bike a little further there's this i don't know if you know where they used to be called the silverado apartments mm. uh where montwood ends and hits viscount yeah there's that apartment complex oh it's where the san mateo apartments now san mateo. yes yeah yeah, yeah. that's where yeah, i used exactly. to live that's where you, like you? recently right. recently well, well right behind there there's like a little a ditch that people yes. would skate the one that that that, that tall has that tall thing in the yeah, middle? Yeah, yeah yeah you can climb so, yeah. so right there mm-hmm. there was a a self-storage place mm-hmm from like 99 to 2000 probably like three or four it was like a pretty heavy graffiti yard you really know? yeah so you would have seen shit. a lot of like some of my best yeah. graffiti was there Damn, at that place that shit. we so would always i worked at the subway right there in the um on viscount oh really yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, so we, we, would, we would always be down there at that ditch getting high <laughs> painting, <you know? laughs> smoking so i i left the floor once i got the floor that's when i started smoking like i i, I was i was gonna be a good I, I, i'd imagine being i've been a good goody at like, like sports or something like that here yeah. in the past. So i don't know where, which direction i was going in who knows what's what but once i got to florida that was like the that was the thing bro you know what yeah. i'm saying so I, I i'm still smoking so i'm saying like so it's just one of those things man but but, uh, but yeah i mean uh you know i i developed a lot of like culture graffiti culture there you know just uh and just el paso in general there's a lot of graffiti culture going around because of spots like that yeah. you know so uh, through graffiti, I was able to establish myself, and then I would go to these graffiti jams in Phoenix, Albuquerque. You know, uh, what's a graffiti jam like? It, you, it's you usually get... like they, they'll have like a big factory, or so, there's a, a wall somewhere they would invite out of town artists to go and paint. That's but dope. we would also go travel just to go to other cities and uh, try to paint. Like, uh, you know, I would go to like Venice. There was like a spot out there that was in real L- famous. It would come California. out in all types of movies. Shit, that's cool, man. On Venice Beach, and it was like 
the most amazing <laughs> gra- art gallery like that was free for everyone you know damn but uh just the culture of graffiti like uh it was la was a, a mecca for were you sure. into any other art before that like the graffiti like uh, you, you just drew, drawing you just know drawing, drawing like like drawing, here and there or like you love to draw uh like i or would draw somebody, a lot like from your- like from first grade to maybe like eighth grade it held my attention just like pencil drawings you know just different things you yeah know, like the comic book mm-hmm. phase uh, oh yeah like cartoon i was simple doing, like recreating the comic books yeah, yeah i would draw then, that uh, shit too trying to do portraits and trying stuff to, like yeah. that but yeah. I, w- I would like kind of trace it and then like still draw like add on because i never could get like dimensions correct it would be all like lopsided yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> or small legs and fucking big body yeah for shit. sure yeah. that's why i like cartoons <laughs> <laughs> dope but uh, but, hey, uh, but yeah bring back aqua thing hunger force i'm saying it again yeah right <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah I, I mean i would draw here and there and uh it wasn't until like i i like uh discovered graffiti that mm-hmm like uh the passion came back you know Mm -hmm. like and it was like a way to get like famous without really all you had to do was be good you know and and you would get noticed of Mm -hmm. like how your style your your style is yeah yeah, yeah, you know so so it it was pretty cool getting into that uh subculture it like took me a lot of places like you know from our from our own wanting to like go Mm -hmm. do graffiti and then like just see the other cities graffiti take pictures of yeah. all these other cities did you ever trains what, everything yeah I, so I, going to those cities i mean like venice is it beautiful did you ever think about like living there or moving there no 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 it, it was lo- just, oh, really? I, I mean uh, I, I, yeah i guess like LA, la i always wanted to go to san francisco still haven't been to this day but that was like a really big mecca of graffiti you know and you never been there no oh damn oh, yeah. damn we gotta get too out more, there convention or something <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like i only recently started flying it but oh whoa. well not a super recently but I guess, was it too far i guess it would be like what, well, what, was it when 10 i was hours? heavy in graffiti it yeah. was like i would drive everywhere you know me and, the, ho- me and the homies yeah because yeah. you would pack all the homies in a in a car and yeah. we're all going Who's to go paint yeah, and just some go gas fuck shit up in shit. the city you know so uh, <laughs> nice yeah you would uh usually take like road trips with like uh, a few writers you know that's like, what's uh, up but you would network with people ba- you know trunks full of paint or what yeah yeah for sure usually people would come in town you would like uh network through like these graffiti jams and then be like oh come out to houston sometime and then you know you'd be like fuck it i'm gonna go out to houston and they would you would have like a host and mm-hmm. like a place to stay you know crash on a uh a couch and they would take you out to all these like train spots uh wall oh, spots uh show you all the good food like it's having like a local guide but it's pretty cool you both have that passion for just graffiti and painting culture. and getting your name up you know yeah, in different it's a cities, culture for you know? sure uh, so. i just recently had um lola rose the, the restaurant that i like to go to they, oh, yeah. they kind of did the same thing in a way like they invited me to come cook like they've stated it before like hey would you like to come cook in the kitchen i'm like haha you know thank you i appreciate it you know like they're just being nice the second time they asked me i was like you know like damn that's cool really and then yeah. the third time i was like these motherfuckers are serious so they fucking yeah all right so i went down there and i they know they gave me they walked in they gave me a, a apron and show me around this is you know mario this is gay that's cool you know what i mean yeah. fuck i was throw, i was thrown back like a motherfucker but like you're saying you get that you know courtesy because you're in the culture you know what yeah, I mean? they know exactly you're you're the same blood you know yeah, you're bleeding yeah. the same you know getting burned the same way and stuff like that so everybody kind of everybody gave me respect shout out uh chef oscar and uh chef marco for i mean that's basically his kitchen but uh chef oscar gave me you know the the the, the hospitality the hospitality mm-hmm. of uh ev- letting me go go in there and I, I wasn't at the pass he was actually at the pass like calling tickets and put, putting everything out but he let me you know make uh, a mousse bouche which is like a little plate for everybody so like uh, as you know I, I just kept replenishing those helping like plates come in finish gar- garnishing cool. yeah man it was a great great experience but i mean that's what i'm saying like being in one culture and being passionate those two things you you you, you, find, places, you, you yeah. find a culture you're passionate and it just like those two things click you you, yeah. you you automatically know it's not like this guy's a poser it's not like a, you're thinking in that way it's just like you just automatically like this, click this person just, really gives uh a, yeah, yeah about yeah. the culture and he put, he's putting in work you know what i mean he's yeah. grinding you know what i mean so i respect that 100 percent. i don't have a kitchen but if i could invite any either of those chefs or any of the chefs in there to what i do uh in fact uh, i think chef andy on grill was interested in like working with me so i would definitely extend this is the way you i'm sure you have to oh, other yeah, people yeah, right yeah, sure. to come yeah, into yeah. El Paso yeah, and I'll show you around passing through like you know we tell a lot of uh, good tattooers that are mm. friends that I've met at conventions. Like, mm. 
yeah if you ever want to come through you know you have a spot to work at you know we absolutely pretty busy i don't know if we shop. talked about your your shop though in general like uh, sun city right sun city yeah, yeah, tattoo yeah, shop okay. sun city tattoos we've been oh. it's t- this year's our 20th year that we've been open <laughs> I've been with them. Have you had your years. like anniversary twenty year party yet, or what? No, not yet. Oh, okay. We're thinking. I don't know. We got some, we're, <laughs> it we're sounds like something big, out. man. Yeah, That's pretty we'll dope, man. Twenty out, years. Sheesh. Yeah. Because I did meet uh, Joe. Uh, he's yeah. like the owner, right? I met him at a uh, bar. He was introduced, you know, by somebody. But real, uh, like poised person. Like he seems yeah, like yeah. he has a, a an eye on uh, you know business and things like that. Real, real pleasure meeting him. So 20 years in business, that's, that's something to say. And you have, I, I guess, since 07, you're saying? You've yeah, been in that? I've been with them since 07. Business is hard, man. Be- being an entrepreneur, can you just give me a little insight on, on entrepreneurship in, in general as a tattoo artist? Uh, how's that been for you? Well, I guess like, you know, just uh, being with the shop so long, uh, being invited to see how it runs, you know, right. and, and having the interest in how it runs and and then eventually being I was asked to be an investor on a new location so I became part owner you know me and another artist Addy shout out to Mr. Addy there you go but uh we are both artists that were able to you know help the shop name as a whole get bigger by investing in a second location and badass man. we've been all partners since then and um you know i think if we didn't have that guidance from joe who had mm-hmm. been in the business and who had uh an outside perspective mm-hmm. which is uh, something that's kind of important to see all different <laughs> aspects and angles uh you know of how people experience something because you know joe to my knowledge i don't know i was sold otherwise recently <laughs> but uh that he he never tattooed you know what i mean oh, okay um he was just solely the business owner with mm-hmm. a group of artists that were good and he just would push them and nice. and everyone that he would get on board it would, you know they would have to produce quality and that's really what he cared about he wasn't like slave driving us or you know making us you know be work the, you, you know he be wanted the top us quality, try to he get was better. Developing, developing us mm-hmm. as artists you know by pushing us like you know and making sure we're not just like hyper focused on what we do you know he would like expose us to other like artists try to get guest artists into the shop take us as a shop to these keep you conventions. interested keep you yeah, interested yeah. And, and like uh motivated to, yeah, to like exactly. learn and get better every day so just just seeing that and you know the business model that he would be as uh, again the perspective it's mm-hmm. more of like what the client would you know how the client experiences sure when they walk in on us you know we Absolutely. gotta we gotta meet you know we're we're in this art world where we value certain things real high and then the clients have these values that they have whether they're here or here uh-huh. we, we got to figure out a way to like, kind of meet in the middle Absolutely. and accomplish like something good you know mm-hmm. with with holding our standards you know absolutely so uh, i'm waiting for the analogy on chef on, on food Does yeah, they, yeah is it coming, is it coming? Yeah, no. i guess i guess it would be uh <laughs> you know you wouldn't you wouldn't have people over for dinner and just like throw them something like super fast because yeah there's so, too many of them you would yeah. plan it you know me like, personally if i invite you over my house i would i would throw everything at you <laughs> i would throw everything like i did the, the few Paul. lunchables <laughs> and, uh, even the lunchable i should have actually dang it you know but no I, i'm saying like when paul came over i gave him you know like steak i gave him uh octopus uh sea bass mussels i threw everything at him you know what i mean but that's, that's just yeah. different you know what i mean like what what i would to the to, to no, i'm s- talking about like hot dogs but uh, <laughs> i know boil some, oh you guys but, are over here like yeah, oh, I, but that's I invited what you let me boil some hot dogs real quick <laughs> but uh, i don't have i don't have buns but i'm gonna <laughs> give you some sandwich bread and but some mustard that's your hospitality that's what i'm saying so if you go over to Micah's house bring the buns or bring the mustard yeah. bring the spicy mustard you know what i'm saying no i'm just saying as a as a tattoo shop we're at, we're gonna right. make sure we give you we serve you some quality stuff that exactly. you're gonna enjoy we want to watch you enjoy it we, we want you to be happy absolutely and I, I thought of the analogy basically is like when i walk in and i meet a new client uh i have to see first of all what's their allergies and what's their preference you know usually yeah. they say this one thing i want mediterranean diet and basically that is is like fresh fresh uh vegetables uh fish or chicken and uh kind of like olive oil and infused tomatoes you know what yeah. i mean like stuff like that so i have to you know my is like you said my level is here with all the things that i can do and the aesthetic that i want to bring and then they're like well we want mediterranean and we want fast you know easy so i have to kind of like bring it down okay and this is the product that i give to you you know what i'm saying like and then 
work around it and see what what yeah how actually, can you flavor during it, to, it yeah how can i flavor they, they it better can enjoy for you? it better than something that they would just throw together themselves, absolutely and know? in the midst of it you got to have that smile and that you know courtesy about yeah, you yeah. know customer service and all that stuff so yeah i mean i definitely understand that and it's funny that you made the first analogy because as you talk like i see how they correlate both times like everything you're saying you know because I, I had the restaurant that i went to I was just there to cook, you know what I'm saying? But Chef Cliff was like, no, like, uh, Julienne, this chicken. And I'm like, Julienne, what the fuck is Julienne? You know what I mean? He's like, right here, boom, 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 boom. All right, give it to me like that. You just, and I, I was like, oh, I didn't see that. Motherfucker, then open your eyes, you know what I mean? It's a yeah. whole, like, different culture. You start being like, oh, what? All right, all right. So then, boom, 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 here's a Julienne, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. just like, but you get thralled, you get, like, real passionate, and you learn the passion yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. So I think I'm saying you're saying that, like, as far as entrepreneurship, like, Joe got you motivated into that, and then, like, Chris Dirt is somebody that, like, actually motivated you in the art the, and yeah, the, the inking and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So we all need those, like, mentors that kind of pu pull yeah. pull you into it. The ones it, that, that are showing you, you the under art, water, yeah. The ones that are showing you the, you know, the, the basic ingredients, mm -hmm. and then the ones that are enjoying it you know mm -hmm. they're showing they're showing you how to give it to people to enjoy it for sure not just you know yeah <laughs> and that's the thing that's what you see though it's like when i was in the kitchen i, I used to see chef cliff and he was like in this box that nobody could see but he was like pop pop, 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 pop. shit was flying bubbling and everything and i'm like oh, trying to get out of his way and then what was he doing that so fast for us so that he could give me the reins go outside take his uh, apron off and go say hey how you doing how's your night did you enjoy your food Thanks for coming. Appreciate yeah. you. You know, how's the family yeah, and stuff like exactly. that. It's I was really like, important. I'm not. I'm making pizzas. Like this motherfucker. It's like yeah. a whole level. <laughs> yeah, exactly, to hold, yeah. You know, there's a whole other exactly, level to yeah, this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and I, can I do that? Can I just bust out 18 yeah. meals like that, and then go out there and do that? I don't know. But like, I was pa like impassioned at that moment, and then later I was like, fuck, I want to be like Chef Cliff. How do I do that? How do I fucking do that? You know? Yeah. Definitely. Kept thinking about that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, shout out to all the mentors and uh, that are helping other people, you know, get into a passion and find their passion and then well, culti cultivate it to be able to take care of their family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, exactly. Fuck, like me as a chef, who who have thought I'd be able to take care of my family the way that I do now by cooking food? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'll go tell my 18 year old self, "Hey, you're gonna be a chef." He'd be like, mm, "What, Nick? What, yeah. what the fuck <laughs> are you talking about, dog? I, Like, I don't know. I want to be like a doctor, a pilot. I don't know. I want some yeah. money. You know what I'm saying? I want yeah, some money. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know, man. But like, yeah, definitely shout out to mentors. Uh, I appreciate you coming, man. We have like five minutes left, but uh, some some of the things we uh, ask our, our guests are like um, uh, we call it eight to educate. Um, so you as a, a passionate uh, artist, you as a um, entrepreneur, as an owner, um, somebody who's you know got businesses and you want to progress. Um, you am sure you've got a lot of blessings in life. Like, how do you pay it forward? What's one of those things that you do to try to pay it forward? Whether it be training, whether it be just kind of mentoring, or you know throwing your money at, at some kind of charity or something like that is there anything yeah, you um you know we we did uh some gift certificates for a border run coming up so okay. you know anyone in the local area look out for that uh they're gonna raffle off 350 dollars gift certificates there you go um but that's, you know that's stuff a like that all, all right the money there. is going to the children's hospital i believe so you know we we do try to give back as far as uh you know donation stuff uh charity work we'll get back in that way because that's what we do best is tattoo so right. you know we, we try to share that with someone that might just be hanging out at an event and happens to win a raffle you know what i mean so <laughs> Dope. so it's it's exciting for us and them as a new client coming in you know and then you know we get to create what we do um oh, yeah. so we get back like that um me is like a uh, more experienced artists uh, with my peers that I work with. I'll just try to be like a uh, resourceful, you know, like if I see them looking anything up and I know where something is or, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, as far as a reference or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, needles, you know, inks, you know, that are good, uh, machinery, you know. Yeah, and I've, I've been there when I'm getting tattooed. Uh, you're very cordial, uh, very easy to talk to when people, artists walk up to you and they're like, even when you're tattooing, that's what I'm saying. Like that's, uh, you got to have patience, I guess, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and if you're going to be a mentor, you're going to be that person, you got to have patience and I think you have a lot of that and, and these guys respect you at your shop and that's really cool. Uh, another question we ask is like, what's uh, what inspires you? Like whether it be a person or a thing, like what, what inspires you like to do it day to day to grind, grind it out? Um, I, I think just, you know, the satisfaction of clients, you know, walking away with something that they're like, whoa, that came out way better than I expected. You know, they'll come in with certain expectations and, you know, I use my years of experience and, and everything I've learned to try to make it the best 
product I could produce, you know, right, right, for sure. instead of just, you know, doing the same thing they asked for, you know, like I'll try to give my take on it, you know, uh, make it to where it might be a little bit better or cleaner mm-hmm. or whatever the case may be, you know, like I'll, I'll try to do it in the best way I know how okay. at where I'm at in my career. And it, when you do that in any profession, you know, it, it'll, you'll see it when the client if you have clients uh, you know walk away very happy you know hell yeah blown away you know like have you know and are are ready to come back yeah you keep a high aesthetic like when you're doing everything you're like you're tattooing like you always keep the high aesthetic trying to do better than the next tattoo and all that stuff yeah i definitely feel that or or when people are like what's the best tattoo you ever done oh this one right here (laughs) <laughs> ah, well, you've done that your own? should be your attitude. You've you know? done your own, or the no, no, next no, one? no, oh, this the, one that I'm about this, to do. This one that I'm about to do. I like that. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like What's that. What's your favorite tattoo? This one right here. I think I'm gonna uh, start saying uh, that when yeah. they're like, "Well, what do you like to cook?" I'm like, uh, mm, "Whatever I'm gonna cook right now." No, what's your best dish? Uh, the one I'm about to cook. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that, man. I'm yeah. gonna use that. The other one is uh, we ask uh, about a breakthrough moment. Do you feel like you've had a breakthrough moment, and and, and if so, what was it? Um, I guess recently the breakthrough moment would be just realizing you know uh like the the next convention we do this convention yearly in uh, Mm -hmm. albuquerque and it's an amazing convention like uh it's called the new mexico tattoo fiesta Uh by my homie bale shout out to bale but um he puts on this amazing show and it you know it's such amazing artists that you know i want to be part of it i want to be there i want to have my presence known but this year I had a breakthrough that like there's so much to gain from being here that I also want to experience. I've worked it for I think it's the tenth year, uh, or maybe the eleventh. But Damn. you know, I've worked work. it every single year. Yeah. And now like this year I was like looking around and like there's so many seminars on business. This year they had business seminars and tattooing skill yeah, s- yeah. skill seminars, but sure. for shop owners, um, you know, there's all these amazing artists that could go up specifically to get tattooed for, you know, like, uh, I, I think I want to experience it now. You know, I got to the point in, in my career where I would rather bring my team up from the shop mm-hmm. and like have them experience working it, but also maybe a chance to do what I want to do is, which is walk around, maybe get tattooed one of the days, maybe take a seminar the other day and work one day, you know, yeah, for I, sure, for sure. I just, finally felt that like hey, i don't have to be the only one here like like representing the shop mm-hmm. i could bring all my team up maybe and mm-hmm. and anyone who's interested in going up for the weekend and getting tattooed you know so that's definitely i'm a- definitely gonna get get that angle this next coming year and uh whichever other you know uh conventions that we do that are are beneficial like that you know maybe see it as that way you know there's one in detroit we do also and same thing amazing amazing artists you know sponsored by one of the top ink companies you know yeah yeah for sure so you know it's i i want more of my the my people that i'm surrounded by on a daily basis to come with me and be there experiencing it not just me representing the shop up there you know because i just saw it as like oh i don't I, I should be doing this, you know. So I should have been doing a long time ago, maybe, you know. That's what's up. But man. we're just so worried on like, oh, we gotta work the convention. We're we're working, you know, like uh, we're just going up there to work, going up there right. to work. But now but you, I want to enjoy it, you know, and yeah. I want everyone to enjoy it. You know, I think, so. well, you just kind of like as an entrepreneur, I think you started like l- getting more of that entrepreneurship, like where you're like looking around, like I can do this, and I've been doing this, but like it would be easier just. Easy, it would be easy just kind of like bring my team too as a shop as yeah. I grow and then we could grow together in yeah, a shop exactly. yeah that's definitely a breakthrough moment man because you're like pulling your head above it's like a navy seal I feel like pulling your head above water and then like pulling his team too it's like yeah, oh, yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah that's them beast shit man that's dope man like, definitely a breakthrough moment because uh, as an entrepreneur it's tough like I just had an entrep- uh, apprentice myself as a chef uh, we had it five months and I just really didn't see any growth and then uh there were some you know issues that were like you know tardiness but like you know just little things that i i had to move on and stuff like that so i don't know if you've had a, had a moment like that where you had to move on from uh either an apprentice or someone that you've been with for a long time um train, no, tra- they'll, train they'll, for they'll a long usually time. filter themselves out not that there's been a lot but mm-hmm. you know um usually you know there's been a, a few that just like had to walk out because they didn't want to put the work in, you know, if, it, yeah. if there's anyone interested in watching this, that's interested in getting tattooed. Uh, 
I mean, uh, being, get a it, being a tattooer, mm -hmm. the best route is always an apprenticeship with an experienced tattooer. Oh, yeah. Because you're going to learn that much faster. But, you know, depending on who is the mentor, some mentors are going to... The, the way the the way I always think when having an apprentice is I want to be taught the way I wish I was taught. So sometimes that requires a lot of structure because I know myself at the the age I was at right. starting like mm -hmm. where my attention was. And oh I, yeah. You know, I wish I would have like focused more and like learned faster, you know, mm -hmm. and, and been a more put together person. You sure. Know? But, yeah. Uh, but I try we... to pass that along as far as apprentices nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, as someone looking to get into something, look for that structure that's going to be taught to you. You know, mm -hmm. you don't want someone that's not going to take you seriously and like let you do your own thing and not really be watching you. You're just there, you know, like, uh, it's not gonna be beneficial you know you want some kind of like structure rules yeah. you know like i think you're recipes right. you know like yeah no, be that coach yeah, be yeah. that coach uh, yeah exactly. like, you need, that's a, i think that's because like when i train the kickboxing in the morning like uh they keep when he i'm doing my thing like and i could practice all day long but when he comes around and says no you're doing this you're a little bit further away from that and do this it's like that that actually makes you better because at yeah. that point you know how the, to get the technique better once you get the technique you can start being you know fast and powerful and all that stuff so i'm it, sure i'm sure you're that's where you step in and you know help people learn the technique get better it was was crazy i was walking my kid in the park yesterday uh -huh. and i just there was this like a uh, team of like a uh, baseball you know like they were practicing yeah. and they were like kind of maybe like about i don't know eight to twelve but uh they were doing like drills like throwing the ball making them like catch grounders you know and then uh i just hear the coach like yell at this kid you know and i'm like oh shit you know it, caught, it catches <laughs> yeah. your attention yeah because he, he's speaking with so much power but yeah. he's like just put the glove in front of you. <laughs> if it's going to hit you either way, you might as well be prepared with the glove and watch the glove. Yeah. And then I, that's when I turned around and then they, they threw another one at him mm -hmm. and he did it. And like, I was like, wow. So like that sound of force, like mm -hmm. you're going to get hit anyway. Yeah. Put your glove down and be prepared for it. Absolutely. Like, don't be scared. Yeah, be exactly. prepared for it. Yeah. Just yeah. that, that like aggressive that telling coach? you that. Yeah. Like I turned around and sure enough, he like caught it like nothing. It's that coach, yes. Yeah, so so be, to be a mentor, you got to be a coach. You know what I mean, you yeah. got to let like step in and be there for him, not just because I think I, one thing that I was doing wrong was I was trying to produce more. Like if he was coming in, then I was gonna and I took me. If it takes me by myself three hours to do one job, boy, if he's there, it should take me two hours, mm -hmm. or or it should take t three hours. But we're both doing half and half, and it just was never. Um, I me, I should have actually been able to like help him more, like you know what I mean, to be able to grow. I think w from what you're saying, and that I, I believe that 100 because I've been trying to look within to get better. So I think th that's true. I need to be that coach more. Yeah. Whereas later I would be like, hey man, you know, on the drive, like hey, you, you know, you should get b better at this. And when I say roast, this is what I mean. So like, next time I say roast, boom, you can throw it in real quick. But I think you're absolutely right because when I'm kicking the bag and I'm thinking I'm doing right and he's like, hey, no, stand a little closer, turn your foot like this. And I'm like, oh, you're, you're right. It's a lot better, man. Yeah. And you were able to uh, have a little bit more camaraderie too and respect yeah. for somebody who cares about your technique and your yeah. growth and all that stuff too, man. So, pff, man, great talking to you today, man. I, I, I apologize for being late. I was trying to get my new house in order and all that Not shit. No worries. But, uh, you're, Congratulations again. You're a badass dude. though, man. Well, well Thank you, man. Thank you sure. very much, man. You're you're yeah. a badass and you've been uh, uh, kind uh, ever since the first day I met you, man. Like when making appointments or uh, talking business, talking, you know, life. You're the one that actually connected me with Paul. Uh, when we were just doing a tattoo real quick, I said that, you know, I was on a tattoo uh, a podcast. Uh, shout out um, uh, Sweet Jesus. Sweet, Sweet Jesus yeah. Radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Sweet Jesus. yeah. So, so, I was on it. I was on this yeah. uh, podcast and I was all amped and I was like hey man I think I want to start my he, own podcast he dude. had me on my first podcast did he? I, I believe so yeah I'm pretty yeah? sure I did his first yeah, yeah, yeah he's yeah. fucking hilarious man he got uh, he had beers popping yeah he's and a I podcast guess I, OG for yeah, sure yeah 100% <laughs> I need to get him on here hopefully I can get him but uh yeah, I just mentioned that to you, and you're like, hey, yeah, if you're, I think I said I was more than just you know interested. I was like really looking, and you were like, hey, well, 
my you know friend of mine is a, a producer why don't you give him a call like that and that was like 23 episodes ago bro yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah i appreciate that very much man. that's some very admirable work ethic dude. Uh, like, man, you know man, i appreciate it man yeah, we're just trying sure. to i i this is my way of paying it back like i said yeah. i had a lot of blessings through hard work but man this is my way of paying it back it's fun and therapeutic but i mean i hope somebody gets sparked up to like start their business and you're putting your information out, what out there yeah, yeah figure out sure. what your passion is and then just exploit it man try to make a if, even if you're gonna have the nine to five but if you have a side job where you're drawing and you're actually selling it or doing something like pr productive somebody you make a logo for somebody i think that'll help you just mentally and, and and just help you get by day to day like so that's my message and you know i mean hopefully this podcast you know helps out and like people like you who are, have been through the grind and, and doing your thing and keeping a high aesthetic like you talked about and diversifying and growing and stuff like that so you inspire as well man so i appreciate you very much uh it's good to know you it's good to be friends with you it's, thank you and, much and, respect and, and thank good you. to be in the business realm if i had a question i know i could come to you and ask uh about you've been in the game for oh, a yeah. minute I'm, so i'm an open book so. ah, there you go okay open door policy guys so, uh, go, ahead and, <laughs> go ahead and stop by some city <laughs> but yeah it's been a pleasure man and uh uh Thank you so much. And shout out to uh, King Vic, man. The muff, he was sick. Who knows yeah, what the heck. Get well soon. Get yeah, well exactly. Soon. Get well soon. Uh, you know, there's supposedly the COVID. It's not COVID. This motherfucker, he just probably got a little cold. You know what I mean? Get over it. It's <laughs> nothing, dog. Stay positive. You know what I mean? But everybody else, stay positive. Stay motivated. Um, keep going. Keep going. Whatever you're going through, it's going to be over it tomorrow. I promise. Keep going. Keep going. There's a lemonade stand at the top of the mountain, y'all. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate Thank you. you. Appreciate that shit, dude. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. yeah.